Andrew, they need to get a win today. Um, they've sunk to three, three losses in a row. They've dropped from first to fourth, and if they lose, they drop to fifth if the, if the results don't, they, don't go their way. And it's a top four system in the conference. Yeah, it's uh, certainly quite a competitive uh, grade at the moment. And uh, it'll, be, it'll be interesting to see how they come out today, knowing that their season is pretty much on the line in this game. So, so of course, uh, looking at that ladder at the moment, of course, we're about to hear the lineups very shortly. But uh, let's start off with the, the ladder at the moment in the Women's Conference. Moe are 5-1, and one, and they're on top. Of course, they've got uh, a couple... Well, they've got uh, two games clear of Traralgon. Uh, well, technically, three games clear of Traralgon. Of course, Moe are 5-1. Churchill is 7-3. Oh, sorry, Trelgan seven and three. I meant to say Churchill six and three, Westernport six and four, Mafra a five and four, Coonbar a four and five, and you can rule line under that because uh, Warrigal a one and seven, Bairnsdale a nine and seven. Of course, last week Churchill defeated uh, the struggling Warrigal team eighty eight to thirty six, so a fifty two point win there. So we see Churchill uh, on the court at the moment because Stacey O'Brien scored twenty seven points in that game, Taylor Bruins with twenty six points, and let's see. Barry with 17 points in that game. We're going to swing over now to the Western Port Steelers now. Of course, last week they had two terrible losses. Uh, they lost to uh, Mafra by 32 points at Mafra on Saturday before losing here to Chiralgan by, uh, by eight points. Of course, in the game against Mafra, Rachel Warns had 22 points uh, at Mafra. Monique Wife with 14, Bree Watman with 11. And then uh, they did a little reverse in the, in the next game. We've, uh, on Sunday, with Rachel Warnsbury with 29 points, uh, uh, Monique Life with 13 points, and Bree Watman with 12 points in that game against Terralgan. So, so, so we're about to get set here. We've got the National Anthem, so uh, let's go to the National Anthem. There you go, the two teams have got five minutes to go to warm-ups here today's game because uh, we're here at the Steeler Dome for CBL round eight action between the, the Steelers and the Blue Devils here. Will Teller here, of course, uh, taking you through the call-by-call -call coverage here. Of course, uh, we've got Andrew Sieber, of course, having us out uh, in this game from Falcons TV, of course, and uh, doing a great job, uh, of course, as per usual. And we're about set for today's game. Between the two teams, you can see the two teams just warming up. Now, of course, you can see the Steelers, uh, of course, warming up uh, on our left. And, of course, the Blue Devils uh, will be on our right, um, of course. But, uh, of course, two team captains, as you would expect, is, uh, of course, Dana Joff, uh, Joe Leaf, of course, uh, uh, from the Western Port Steelers. And, of course, Talani Hood, of course, with the referee in today's game. Of course, there's only one referee today, uh, which is a little unusual uh, for a CBL game. But I'm sure... Um, She'll do a great job, as per usual. You can see the Churchill Blue Devils going through their paces because the Churchill Blue Devils are the defending champions in the CBL uh, Gippsland Conference. Uh, of course, defeat Coonbarra last year. I'm oh, sorry, early this year, I meant to say. Of course, they came terribly close to winning the law um, in the whole CBL competition. Of course, fell short in the last hurdle to Wadonga. But uh, we're about to get set here. In today's game, as I mentioned, Western Ports desperate need a win. They have to win this game, otherwise, it's going to make it very, very difficult. Because, well, the draw is reasonably reasonable. They've got Warrigal and Bansdale in the next two games. Of course, then they take on the high flying Moe in the last round in Moe, 
this is their last home game of the season, of course. And of course, uh, Churchill, they've got a couple more games up their sleeves. So we're about set to go here. And if you're listening online and you want to check out the action as well, you can always go to www.smashfm.com.au and you should be able to see on your mobile phone or your computer or your tablet, you should be able to follow the game live from Somerville. Absolutely. So 2.50 remaining, of course, to the start of this game. Some crucial matchups in today's game, no doubt about it, of course. Talani Hood from the Churchill Blue Devils uh, will be matching up. Most likely, we think, uh, well, I believe she'll probably match up against Jess Curran or, uh, or even uh, Rachel Warnsborough, of course, uh, in, that, uh, in that forward position. Of course, Tally Bruins had a fantastic season so far. I'm, I'm pretty sure she's going to be matched up against one of the tools as well from the Western Port Seal. So I guess the tools, uh, that forward and that centre position is going to be very, very crucial in the context of today's game. And, uh, well, the crowd's just done the rolling into the Somerville Steeler Dome. And, of course, a uh, reasonable crowd. A couple of the Churchill uh, fans have turned up here as well. And, of course, uh, if you're listening on Smash FM, of course, watching this on Falcons TV, of course, uh, because we're everywhere, of course, around the world, and not just the Gippsland area, and, of course, uh, here in Melbourne. But uh, we're ready to go, of course. Now, Smash FM coverage dates to Watson Hole and HB Bandura. Back to sleep and Pataki, simply the best. And we're about ready to go here. Of course, so let's have a look at the starting lineups first for the Cheshire Blue Devils. And it starts off with Stacey O'Brien. He had a fantastic game in the last round. Santa Lobros, of course, uh, Talani Hood, Taylor Bruins, and Letsy uh, Burry. And of course, for the Western Port Steelers, their, their starting lineup looks a little like this. It's Rachel Warnsborough, Bree Watman, Brian Galea, uh, Monique Live, and Jess Curran. One at ten remaining here. This is it. It is a desperate situation for both teams. So we're about ready to go here. Of course, don't forget there's only one referee in today's game, which is very unusual for a basketball game. But I'm sure uh, she'll do a great, great job. No doubt about it. We're about ready to go here. Western Port and Churchill. The winner progresses on, and the loser, well, they're going to find themselves in a very sticky situation. Come at the end of the season. <coughs> and uh, it should be a very entertaining day, uh, Andrew. Yeah, it certainly should, should be. Uh, of course, uh, a lot of these girls use the, um, the CBL as a, as a competition to keep themselves fit uh, during in between the uh, big V season those who aren't of course playing WNBL and uh, the uh, it's a, a good alternative to the MNBL competition as well which is a Wednesday night competition here in, in Melbourne I've just been notified by our PA man here that uh, we've got an extra five minutes till the actual other referee turns up of course, uh, you can see both teams uh, just, um, well, I can see Churchill anyway, uh, just doing their warm-ups, having a bit of a shoot-around. Because uh, Mark Prada just talking to his players in front of us, of course. And, of course, Rachel Warnsborough, of course, absolutely steamrolling in this competition at the moment. She is averaging at 26 points per game. She's actually leading the MVP votes at the moment with 25 She's, uh, she's moving to Camberwell uh, this coming season, Big V season, uh, and being coached by uh, none other than Justin Nelson, who, uh, who often uh, will be our compadre here at uh, Smash FM and Falcons TV, as well as Big V Live. He, uh, how he's going to, to manage all his various <laughs> roles next season is going to be interesting to see. So we hope uh, that we don't lose him to the commentary world because he's uh, good value there. Absolutely, it certainly is, and of course, uh, of course, Justin, uh, the former coach out of Warrandyte, championship coach. Um, it took them a long while to get there, but uh, they certainly did, of course. Uh, of course, uh, you would have seen a little fair bit of Rachel, uh, of course, last year, uh, of course, uh, when uh, Waverley and Warrandyte would have faced each other in state champ women. 
last year? Yeah, um, she did well. Um, Warrandyte, Warrandyte struggled against Waverley. Um, particularly, particularly early in the season when uh, Bridget Ardrossi was still playing in the team. But, uh, but certainly uh, she was, if not their best player, she was uh, certainly one of their best players. Um, she's very, very good under the basket. And uh, that's going to be a big loss for Warrandyte uh, in the Big V, of course, uh, now going to Camwell and join her, well, her premiership, her championship coach. Yeah, she, they uh, picked up the Div 1 championship the year before last. Uh, as, uh, and then that was the, uh, the catalyst for them to, to launch their bid to go into champ when, women. But uh, yes, it will be interesting to see how, how Warrandyke goes in the Big V competition this year. In fact, the whole lot, because we've now got Southern Penn coming into the competition mm. as well. Uh, that'll be ratified at the AGM, which is happening right this very minute. Um, in at, uh, I think it's at Wadden Turner. I think they're, they're having it at the State Basketball Centre this year, rather than going away down to uh, Geelong. Correct, yep. So... Uh, it's a bit more of a, a restrained weekend, I believe. <laughs> and, you know, like if Sun Pen, obviously, by, by the sounds of it, well, all the talks going around the Big V, Sun Pen will go up to state champ win, which, is, yeah. which means they've done a double promotion in the last two seasons, if that's happened. Of course, we get to see one of their players, Brian Galea, of course, playing out here for Western Port. She plays out at Western, uh, Western Port, uh, Sun and Peninsula. Yep. Of course, in state champ, which you will see a bit of a uh, bit of action uh, for Sun and Penn uh, when they come up to take on Waverley. Of course, because um, uh, it'll be it'll it'll be an interesting competition because having that extra team there will will actually balance the fixtures out uh, a lot better than they were last year. Uh, with That's the, right, you had the buy, didn't you? Yes, there was the odd number. So uh, probably bringing one extra team, and there's going to be a very good uh, result for the for the champ women's competition. And but uh, they're also going, it's also going to be interesting to see how the, the uh, men go with, um, I think they're playing, they haven't come up to Champion, they're staying mm, in Div 1. Yeah, but, uh, I don't know, it might be actually, we'll see what happens if they do go up, because actually they um, they were runner, runners up last year in, in, in Div 1, so it'd probably be fair if they both went up. Yeah. The women's go up, men should go up too, you would think. Uh, yeah, I suppose so, but uh, but again, it's not the, the thing with Big V is that there's a relegation. There's relegation in both the uh, state youth championship men and women. Yep. Uh, and we've seen that in that Hume City has has dropped uh, da out in the women. They've they've gone down to Youth League One. Yep. Uh, and Hawthorne went up. Hawthorne g took their spot there as well. There's also relegation in Div 1 and Div 2, which is the over 23 competition, the open age competition. The one league which does not have a relegation uh, rule or, or is, is Champ Men. And that's, uh, that's like Siebel, you, uh, you apply to get in there and you actually have to submit a business case as to why your team should be playing in that particular competition. Mm. So it has to, the, and, and the business case is based on your personnel, uh, the support structure you've got in the uh, stadium, uh, a whole heap of other factors as well. So um, I, my mail is, and it is only rumour because I'm not uh, the delegate, otherwise I'd be at the meeting, Yep. Um, that uh, Southern Penn will st still play Div, Div 1, uh, yep. but we'll see how we go. Talking about other Div 1 teams, Chelsea looks to be an interesting one with Vlad Tankoff taking over the, uh, the reins yeah. as coach. Um, and, and again, from what I'm hearing is that there's going to be quite a turnover in the playing personnel there as well. So uh, I know that, uh, that quite a number of players have, have moved to other Div 1 teams and a couple into some champ men's teams as well. So... Again, be interesting to see what goes on with that uh, that particular team. Which is interesting because Chelsea got knocked down in the first week of the finals to Warnable, um, a very very injured rabble with Warnable, which unfortunately for Warnable got knocked out the following week uh, to yeah. La Trobe. So 
be interesting to see how that uh, that really fares with Chelsea in particular um, as the season rolls on. But uh, I must say, last year's grand final series in state men and women, neither neither team actually won a home game. Neither of them, of course, you saw the state champ men. Uh, yeah, uh, we broadcast all three all three of the uh, the games uh, from Ringwood and then the two from Corio Bay, and had a fantastic uh, audience there. So we had over three hundred people uh, online watching those games, uh, which was fantastic. And the um, and that's per game too, by the way, not uh, not three hundred in total. Yep. And the uh, the videos up on YouTube, I think, are, are over over two thousand hits wow. so far viewing so far on that. So it shows the sort of interest in there uh, in that uh, that people have in what is essentially a a uh, domestic or state domestic competition, mm. of course. But uh, but yes, you're absolutely right. The um, the home teams lost, which was uh, really unusual. Mm. Tell us uh, the state champ one before we get this one underway. Um, were you surprised Ringwood did it from behind? They had to. Oh, everybody was after uh, losing the first game at Ringwood. Yeah, yeah. Every everybody was very surprised about that, and it was all, almost almost. Uh, you know, sort of a, a repeat of what the Falcons did to, to Ringwood uh, a couple of years ago, back in 2012, um, where they came, uh, came won the last two games away from home uh, at, at Ringwood. Um, and I, I suppose that's that's really, uh, you know, Matty Snowball was, was extremely good He uh, through that, that series. Um, and they contained Marlo Hicks. They really contain Marlo Hicks uh, really well in that uh, in that last series. So we have the two refs now. Yep. Fantastic. So we're ready for a start. Correct. And of course, uh, just going back to that, Brian, they went without Brian Dewar, Ringwood did Crow Bay and won. Yes. And, well, that was also a, a rather nasty thing because in the uh, Brian came down in the second game, the first home game, and dislocated his shoulder. And, and in OT, was, OT. Yeah, it was rather sickening. Um, a sickening uh, injury at the time. As so we're ready for a jump here. We certainly are. Of course, Rachel Warnsborough taking on uh, Bo, and uh, it was, goes to Churchill with the first tip of the game here. And uh, and we're underway with the Blue Devils with control, and Talani Hood drives to the basket, swings it inboard. No, turns it over, and it goes to Watman with a long passing board to uh, Jess Kieran on the far side. Back to Monique Live, now inboard. Watman. Inboard here. What can they do here? Galea swings around the screen. Try to go for Warns, but turns it over. Talani Hood now with it for the Blue Devils, but turns it straight over now to Monique Life off the dribble. So turnovers to start us off. Warns for an open two. Got it. So Rachel Warns for hits the first two of the game, and it's 2 nothing Steelers. Big game for both teams. O'Brien gives it to Hood. In ball we go now. Right down the post. Bounce pass back at the bow and banks it home. So it's two apiece here. The Steelers and the Blue Devils in the first period of this game so far. Watman brings it up. Gives it across now to Galea. In ball to Warnsborough. Back down, down the post is Kiernan. Misses. And here comes the Blue Devils. Here comes Lambrose. Up for two on the way, no good. Rebound now to Watman, and Watman brings it up for the Steelers. Down the field is Rachel Warnsbury, who won't miss off the, off the post there, and it's 4-2 Steelers. Hopefully enjoying our coverage here on Smash FM and Falcons TV. The defending champs are on the reels if they lose this game. Hood for three, no good. Rebound now by Watman, who's picked up the early rebounding uh, here. Of course, she's playing in the guard position, of course. Monique Life, Lloyd's a three. Got it! So 7 2 now to the Steelers. So now, margin here is 7 2. As they stop by here, the Churchill uh, Blue Devils, they hit that two there. By Brawns, of course, she's had a great season. Of course, uh, the second lane scorer behind Talani Hood for the Blue Devils. So, Galea passes to the left into uh, Light. Here's Whatman for two, no good. And rebound here for the Blue Devils. 
now up the field here. O'Brien stripped away there from Lambrose. And out it goes. 73 remaining. 7 4 to score here on Falcons TV and Smash FM. Hopefully, enjoy our coverage. Ball back into play. Long pass to Talani Hood at the top. Swings it to the left to Lambrose. Drives. Swings it back out now to O'Brien. To Hood for three. No good. And rebound by Watman, and a foul's been called. So 7-4 here, 7.22 remaining in the first quarter. Ball back into play. Watman to live, left side. Swings it out to the right. Is Watman an open three? Can't leave her open, misses that time though. And here comes Hood. Down the field is Lambrose, who should make it home off the glass and does. And it's 7-6. Here's Life. Swings it to the right in Warnsboro. Now to the inboard now to Kern. Now to Galea. Drives to the basket. Swings it up and being fouled. And she'll go line for two free throws. Good start by both teams so far. Still is wet out to a 7 6 advantage. And at the line, Bridie Galea. Missed the first. The Steelers haven't been the free throw shooting team this season. Ranked number four at the moment. Misses that time. None from two. And here comes the Blue Devils. 7-6 score. 643 remaining. Steelers in front. Talani Hood. 4-2 on the 15-footer. No good. Rebound by... Bow misses that tie, blocked by Wars, but tapped it out to Talani Hood, fresh 24. Here's Lambrose, misses that for two, scripted away, out it goes, goes to the Steelers. So it's Watman to Manate Life. 7 6 game Steelers. Gives it now to Galea. Galea to. In the hands now. Here's the three on the way by Kerr. No good. Rebound now. Went straight for everyone. And the Blue Devils will get it back. <laughs> Talani Hood. With it now. Drives to the basket. Swiss it in. Foul. And we'll go line. And the foul is on Brady Galea. Timeout has been called. Timeout to Westerport. And the Steelers lead 7-6 uh, here in the first quarter. 6 4 remaining here in the first quarter here from the Steeler Dome in Somerville. Hope you enjoy our coverage here on Falcons TV and also on Smash FM, wherever you are around Melbourne, around the Gippsland and around the world on smashfm.com.au. And uh, Andrew, pretty, pretty reasonable start by both teams. Yeah, um, Devils have dropped back into a zone and... and uh, the Steelers haven't uh, really worked out what they're going to do about the zone just yet. Um, I'd like to see them cut cut the uh, the gaps a lot harder, really force the defence to move around a, a little bit more. But uh, we'll see what uh, Mark uh, Perotta has, has got for them in the next uh, couple of uh, minutes. Absolutely. So 7-6 score, because there is other been other games being played tonight. Of course, Terralgan are hosting Kurumbara right now as we speak. Uh, out there, the La Trobe Leisure Centre in Terralgan. And, of course, uh, Moe uh, headed to Warrigal, up the freeway to Warrigal, to take on the Warrigal Warriors being played at the Warrigal Leisure Centre. Here's Talani Hood at the line, shooting two free throws to put the Blue Devils in front. At the moment, it is a 4 uh, sorry, it is a, yeah, 4 nothing run at the moment. And Talani makes the first. She rarely makes uh, any misses at all. Second shot for Talani. Misses the second, so we're all tied at seven. And here comes the, uh, the Steelers now. DJ, inboard to the right. Here's a shot for two, no good that time. And that was by uh, Kerrigan. And here comes now the, the Blue Devils up the court. It's O'Brien. 
In oh, great steal there by Rachel Warns, bro. She's a known uh, steal, but uh, so is Talani Hood of the Blue Devils. She steals it that time, swings it to the left. Here's Ambrose on the wide open two and bakes it home. 9-7. So I don't think that was what Mark had in mind. Uh, certainly uh, the shot went up very quickly last time. So here's Warnsburg drives to the basket, misses everything, picks up the offensive rebound, missed it. And rebound now by Kieran and fresh 24. Life, open three, missed, rings in and out. And here comes the Blue Devils. Talani Hood, the Trove City captain, who is now the, who is the assistant coach here at the Blue Devils. Drives it in, swings out and left. Here's Lambrose with an open three, misses that time. Probably very lucky because she left it right open. And there'll be a substitution here coming up here for the Steelers. And Matt Price done make some early changes here uh, for the Steelers. And after a 7-2 start by the Steelers, uh, they find themselves down by two on a 7-0 run by the Blue Devils. Same board now on the left. Here's an right open three. Rings in and out by O'Brien. Picks up the offensive rebound. Put back no good. And the rebound by DJ. So that's uh, Joe Leaf, of course, the captain of the Western Port Steelers. Trailing by two. Inboard. Oh, great pass to Kieran and misses. And the rebound by Bo. Both teams now playing a zone in defence. O'Brien drives in, swings it up for two. No good. Rebound now by, uh, oh, Drake still there. Of course, that was Octurna, but they stole it. Uh, and Kieran picks it up. DJ brings it up. The Steelers need a win today. They keep their hopes of a top four alive. DJ on the right, swings out to Manette Live, wide open. Misses that time on the right hand uh, ring. And here comes Talani, who went straight past Turner, jump, falls for a jumper and bakes it home. And now on a 9 nothing run, it is the, the Blue Devils, a lead by four, 11 to seven. Manette Life swings it up now to Turner. Back to the left, into the centre is Kiernan. Lost hands, bring it back out, life. Now to Smith for two, no good. Off the left of the backboard, and a foul's been called. And it's on Monique Smith. That's her first. So ball back into play here. Two fouls apiece. Cleans it up now. Drives in for two. Got it that time there by Taylor Bronze. And the margin now is six. Here they come up the court now. The Steelers just need to compose themselves here. They're on the Blue Devils on an 11-0 run. Manit Lice, three's over the left. Here's DJ. Wide open three. Goes from a long way out and banks it home for three. And the margin is a three. O'Brien swings it in board, foul by Bo and count it. Foul has been called. And we're going to line. It's Manit Life. Picks up the foul. And the crowd is actually building quite nicely at the moment. Absolutely. So it is actually Letsy Bo makes the bonus. So that pushes out to a six point advantage here. 16 10. DJ with it now, 245 remaining. Warnsborough into Watman, back to DJ on the left. Goes for another three, misses that time, way a little strong that time. Warnsborough almost picked it up, gave it to Smith, and then they turned it over. Now, this is O'Brien. Swings it to the right. Here's the chance here for Bronze. No good. A rebound now for Watman. And Watman brings it up the court. Watman now to DJ. Swings it back. Here's Wanzo from three point range. No good. And the foul's been called. It's against Smith. She's picked up two in very quick time. She has. Second personal for her. Got to be a little cautious here. 16-10 is the score. 
14 fouls to two. So Western Port Ori in the bonus here. We're about to hit it anyway. Here's Blondes for two on the on the sky hook. No good. And here comes Warnsborough to Watman. Left side. Swings it to left. Goes with Delia. Out it goes. So still is after 72 starts, uh, Andrew. Um, the Blue Devils have gone 14-3 run. Yeah, look, it, it comes down to the percentage of, of uh, shots that they've actually got in there. Um, both have been shooting from outside pretty much. And, uh, and we'll have to look at the stats a bit later on, but I would, I would guess that, that probably uh, Steelers are, are down around the 28, 29%, and the uh, Devils are probably up over the 50%. Another turnover by the Blue Devils, and guess what happened to them? They just forced another, and then they got a turnover themselves. So it's been an error-ridden quarter so far. 123 remaining. 16-10 to score here at the Steeler Dome in Somerville. Hopefully enjoying our coverage on Smash FM and Falcons TV. Watman to Galea. There on the shot clock. Oh, Galea's got to go for two. No good. Picked up the rebound there by Waterhouse Brennan and gives it straight to DJ. Fresh 24. Watman to DJ. Wide open three. She's done it from that position before and she's done it again. That's what they needed. And it's 16 to 13. Now, this is what they had problems with the last time they had a three. They, uh, they conceded the next basket. 16 13. Ryan's now. Oh, O'Brien for three. Got it. If they're going to play a zone, they have to move that zone out to the outside. It's what we try and teach the, the juniors as well. That, hey, the zone moves. The zone moves, particularly when that ball goes over. So Warnsborough, we were jumper, no good. Re almost got the offensive rebound and did, but then they lost it. So 19-13 into the final minutes now of this quarter. Hood. Blue Devils by six. Final seconds. seconds. Down to nine. Hood. Galea guarding her. Hood. Rear jumper. Misses off the glass. And Galea picks up the rim. And they've got to hurry up here on the buzzer. No good. And that will do here for the, well, for the first uh, quarter action. And the Blue Devils uh, lead the Churchill. Uh, sorry, Churchill lead Western Port 19 to 13 here on Smash FM. And... Falcons TV, and uh, I tell you what, uh, Andrew, as I mentioned, after the 72 start by the Steelers, the Blue Devils have gone 17 and 6 run uh, in the later stage of that, uh, that quarter. So, 19 to uh, 13, and uh, Andrew, what do you think Mark Pryor be saying to his players? I can tell you exactly what he's saying. He's, he's saying that you've got to get your hands up in defence. You've got to close out on those, those shots. You do not let do not let a player loose on the outside there um, along the way. And he's uh, made that point very, very clearly. We could even hear him up here um, without the aid of microphones. So they've got to get lift their defensive intensity but at the same time, what what I'd like to see more is is really attacking that uh, that zone. Uh, you know, m cut the gaps, cut the gaps, run through, make the make the zone actually have to react and lose its shape. And uh, that's not what's happening now. Down the other end, of course, down the other end, there's uh, the Blue Devils coach, who would be saying. Steady as it goes, guys. Just keep it, keep doing what we're doing. Although, from the look of his uh, his arms there, he's also saying, "Hey, we want to get uh, those arms up in defence. Perhaps even spread the defence a bit more on the floor." Uh, but uh, whatever they're doing, they're doing okay because their their shooting percentage is very, very good at the moment. Absolutely, and of course, I can't see the stats too much from down here, but. Uh of course, at the moment, uh, well, it's a pretty even story at the moment here in this game. Of course, Rachel Warnsworth with four points for the uh, 
for the team so far. Um, and six to DJ, Donna Jolly, and, uh, and on the wet, on the Blue Devils side, it's all spread at uh, scoring at the moment at this, uh, at this stage. So we're back on the way here. And Not again, the Devils get back into a 2-1-2 two -two zone. So Benite Life, back to the right, Watman. Swings it to left now. Inboard we go. It's life. Inboard now. Oh, by Coonan. And they've been forced to foul here. And that was that was better. If you notice the, the movement inside there from the uh, from the Steelers, much better there. Again, I'm, you know, the ball moved. People stayed on the outside. Didn't move again. I'd like to see them move a lot more. And Coonan's missed the first shot. So the Steelers are none from three. This is what hurt them in the last ball game against Terralgan. Free throws. Well, at least they made one of them. And the margin now is uh, uh, sorry, five. 19 to 14. As we get ourselves underway here in the second quarter. Talani Hood misses a jumper. And here comes Manit Life. So 19 14 is the score here. Swings an inboard. Back out. Now to Manit Life. Left side. Goes to Warns with jumper. Misses. No, actually just got it in. Just a nice kiss to the basket there. And Warns with six. She's average, as I said, she's averaging 26 points per game so far. So here they come now. Bronze. Left side. Now to O'Brien. He had a fantastic game over the, over the weekend. Last weekend against Weigel. In now to Lani Hood. Here's the three on the way. She's dangerous to that position, but this time misses it, and out it goes. Steelers, Steelers dropping back into a man there, which is putting a bit more pressure on that outside shot, and it certainly helped that time. So Watman for the Steelers. Inboard now. So Jai in now to uh, Warnsburg. Now back to the left. Watman on a jumper. No good. And the rebound now goes to these uh, to the Blue Devils through Donnie and up they go up the court. Back in board now, Bronze. Now to Hood in the middle. Great match up there, of course, Talani Hood and Rachel Warns, but drives in, stolen away by Warns, but here she comes. Here's the fast break. Here's a three on two, and Warns banks it home. Now that is the class of a state champ player right there, Andrew. Good. It was a nice little steal. Again, it was that pressure, that man. And again, they're, they're forcing a lot. To, there's another mistake. They didn't get the rebound, though, as the uh, Devils managed to get it. But it's been kicked out to the uh, to Wandsworth again, driving down down the court. Doesn't quite get there. She gets her own O-Reb. Misses the uh, put back. And the quick transition down the other end and the foul. And that's uh, Talani Hood driving to the basket and being fouled by Monique Life. So that's Monique's. I think that might be two on her now. Just got to find that out very shortly. Be close to two. It is. Second, that's the first team foul. And Talani Hood at the line. Makes the first. Second shot here. They're only down by two at the moment, Western Port. So they're not, they've been very close in most games. Curtin now. Now to Sajaya, left side. Sends it out now to Watman right. Here goes Manit Light, drives him from the right. Bounce pass back out to Watman. Into Warnsford with a fade away two. Bakes it home. Much better ball movement there from the Steelers. And it's 20 apiece here. Again, the only thing that it that I'd like to see different there is, is that once they pass the ball, that they actually find somewhere else to be. Force the defence into, into movement. Swings it in board now. Brawns, six on the shot clock. They're down to four. Miss might be forced to jump ball. It is. It goes to the Blue Devils with three seconds on the shot clock. This man is definitely working for the Steelers. So who had to put it back into play? Back to uh, Bruins, had to chuck it up, no good. And a great, that was a great defense because that's forced a shot clock violation and down the court here. Warnsborough for two, wide open, bakes it home. 
And uh, the Steelers are starting to hit some uh, rolls here now. 10 points for, uh, for Rachel Warnsborough. 22-20. Hood, wide open two. Misses. And the rebound by Monique Life, who stripped away there from uh, Donahue. And off they go up the court here. Left side. Life. Back to Watman. Swings it up. Here's a drive for two on the way. Misses that time. Rebound now. And a foul's been called. Foul's on number 13. Jess Kiernan picks up foul number one. No, number two's been called against her. And here they come now. 22-20 here. And the Steelers don't. O'Brien drives to the basket and bangs it home. And that was way too easy. Way too easy on the Steelers. So that puts the margin back to a more tie-up game at 22. Life around the screen. Jumps out for two. Misses that time. And here comes... Uh, Donahue for the Blue Devils, sweeps out to the right here, here comes Lawrence. Now to Donahue, left side, here's Talani Hood, wide open. Oh, misses everything. No one on the rebound, Hood again misses. Tell you what, and another rebound, O'Brien this time, foul, and we'll go line. And I'd say a timeout's coming there. It is. And this is, uh, this will be Mark Parada from the Steelers, wanting to have a chat there. The last two times down the court, the, um, the Steelers have, have lost discipline on their on their man, which had been working extremely well for them. Well, uh, well, that's uh, he's used his final timeout for the half because there's two timeouts uh, out there at the moment. Because the Blue Devils are just taking a little bit in control here, the the defending champs at the moment. And it's 22 apiece here at the Steeler Dome. And uh, hopefully enjoy our coverage wherever you are here. And, uh, and if you're uh, just listening online, you can always jump on onto the vision at www.smashfm.com.au. Absolutely. At the moment, it is a very tight contest here between the two teams which is uh, fantastic to see at the moment. Uh, just having a look here at the scores at the moment, the scores for this game. Rachel Warnsworth with 12 points, uh, six points to DJ, three points to uh, Monique Life, and one point there to uh, Jess Kieran from the Western Port Steelers. And we'll have a look at the at this, the other team, of course, the Blue Devils, in just a moment. At the line is... O'Brien, Stacey O'Brien, because at the moment she's currently on two points. She's missed the first. So both teams just haven't quite uh, got their shooting uh, rhythm going. And makes the one at least. And the margin now is, this, is the Blue Devils by one. Life. Warnsborough from wide deep misses. Oh, and Kieran, look at that. And uh, she makes the two. Good read on that rebound and the put back there as well. So it brings the margin back to just one point. Steel is in front. Talani Hood. They're going to man to man here now. Drives in now for Bono. Good rebound by Kieran. And, uh, and I tell you what, Andrew, we were saying this before. Um, at the start of the quarter, they had to go man to man. That's exactly what they've done. And they've got their hands up and they've done a fantastic job on defense so far, which will themselves back in the game. Yeah, it's forcing it's forcing uh, bad shots, rush shots. Watman's missed the two. And here comes uh, the Blue Devils. Bounce pass to O'Brien, left side. 19 on the shot clock. Swings it in. O'Brien, guided by life. Drives in, swings around. Just try to set a screen, no good. And have to go backwards, go to Kalani Hood. Instead, it goes back in board to Bo. And uh, I tell you what, Churchill, well, they completely messed up that, uh, that play there. Yeah, again, again, it's that extra pressure of, of getting, getting in their face, getting close up, making, uh, making every, every uh, shot a contested shot. It's certainly paying dividends for the Steelers at the moment. Let's hope that they can continue with that to keep the, uh, the game competitive as there's another foul, unfortunately, against the Steelers. That's on Bri Galea. That's her, that's her first. 
second. So um, the Steelers got to be a little cautious here on their foul problems here because uh, yeah. Cole plays in a bit of fouls at the moment. Two, two apiece so far. Hood drives up for two, no good. Rebound by Talani Hood, goes back again, no good. I must say, I've never seen Talani Hood miss so many shots in, in the ball game so far. She's only managing four points so far. That must show some great defense. Here's Giddies for two. Oh, Ebb completely missed that, but uh, no rebound in there. Managed to pick up the dress. Here's the two on the way back to home there by DJ. Comedy of errors, that last little bit there. Ball jarred free. Everybody's scrabbling around their feet. And it's 26 now. And there's a uh, block. In fact, no, it's been called a, a foot Good violation. violation. Interesting call. So, at the moment, it's a three-point lead to the Steelers, who are, oh, great deep on oh, its foul here on Talani Hood. And that's picked up foul number one. So, that's the second team foul. 26-23. DJ, the kid is on the left. Here's the chance now to Watman. Drives it in, but oh, too low now to Warns. But now Turner now, O'Brien should make this basket. Oh, it's missed everything. Should try again on, and uh, finally got the put back. So when Churchill can run, they can uh, they can definitely put them put the, the other team on the back foot, and that's exactly what they've done here so far. Well, uh, Warns misses a two. Warns picks it up with a put back foul and cut it. That's a lot better on the offensive boys by the uh, the Steelers. And uh, Bowen picks up the foul. Picked up foul number two. And that's foul number three for the uh, for the Blue Devils. So three minutes to go in the game. And makes the bonus, Rachel Warnsbridge. She's very good from the from the bonus line. 29-25. O'Brien drives in, lost the handles, tipped it back out to Talani Hood. Swings it in, but oh, no one's guarded there on the post, and uh, and currently Taylor Braun's uh, wide open in the post. And it's 29-27. The Steelers have to stay in this game. Stripped away, out it goes, still steal the ball. So, live to Warnsborough. Warn two, got it! Well, when she gets on a bit of a roll on Rachel Warnsborough, she cannot miss. So, now, the Blue Devils. It is Hood into Bronze. Two on the way. Got it! Yeah, got the mismatch on the, on the post play. Ball went in through the, through the, uh, the low post. Giddy's shot when uh, on the yeah. side of this uh, backboard, but oh, Warnsborough can't do that on her on in the backcourt because she'll punish you, and that's a foul. Foul's on number 12. That's and it's timeout to, uh, to Churchill. To Churchill, absolutely. And Andrew, what's all of a sudden changing that second quarter? Because all of a sudden we see Churchill making mistakes and, uh, and the Steelers really punishing him on the... On the Especially in that in the in the Churchill's backcourt. Yeah, and again, it's it's basically been that the uh, the the defensive intensity has picked up. Uh, the girls from the Steeler girls have got their hands in the, into the face. Every time somebody has uh, gone to get a take a shot, there's been a, a contest for the ball. They had to shoot over hands. Interestingly enough, just looking at the uh, uh, the Churchill coach, that's exactly what he's saying. Get get your hands up in defence. He's wanting them to uh, to contest that ball uh, and and make the make the uh, the Steelers actually uh, have to score over hands. The other thing too is that the Steelers have actually been coming inside a lot more than the last quarter too. So mm -hmm. you've seen Wandsbury inside. There are other big who I can't. Uh, uh, Jess, I think Jess Kieran number. 13 I think it is yeah that's right that's right it's uh, she's been yeah Jess 
she's she's been uh, pretty active inside there as well. Uh, so it's it's been a better effort there from uh, from the Steelers in terms of uh, making making the uh, the Devils a bit more accountable and uh, and playing a bit more of a three dimensional game, not simply a two dimensional. I still would like to see them when they're attacking the zone. Uh, once they pass the ball, start running. Find us somewhere else to be. You know, make that defence move because at the moment the uh, the Churchill zone doesn't have to move much at all. No, and uh, of course, Morse has missed uh, both free throws, which is unlike her. And we will, we will not count the basket because it's an offensive foul. Great, great uh, set screen there by DJ for the Steelers. So the margin now is still as it is. 14 fouls each. I say five teams fouls now for the for the Blue Devils. He is live misses the two. Oh, Warns almost picked up another rebound there. And here they come now. So Lambrose drives to the basket, swings it up, and a foul. This time not against her. It is uh, she'll go to the line. And the foul's on Monique Life. Picks up foul number three. As uh, subs come in for the Steelers. At the line is Samantha Lambrose. Great crowd just coming in right now. Great to see. Not just for uh, Western Port, but also for the Churchill team. Yeah, the stadium about three quarters full on the, on the um, stadium steps. 31-30. And I'd expect that to uh, to grow a bit as we get closer to the men's game a little bit later today. Absolutely. So it's 31 apiece now, 14 fouls apiece. Here's Warnsborough, wide open. Oh, misses that time. And here comes the Blue Devils, Lambrose down again on the left side. Got it by DJ. Oh, great play by DJ, blocked. And here they come down the other end now. DJ, let's have a little shot, 121, and the foul's been called. For reaching in, fouls on O'Brien. That picks up foul number two. And then puts them in the bonus. So this has been the Western Port's problem all year. It's all about the free throws. And that's probably why. It missed the first. So both teams now with a minute and 21 on the uh, game clock will be going to the line. And she at least makes one of two. DJ coming back, of course, she didn't play last week, the captain. Took a week off. She has nine so far. Warnsby still leads all comers at the moment. His hood misses. She's been off uh, in the shooting department, but I'm sure uh, if, she, if she hits the shooting, she might uh, get a bit of a scoring roll. Here's DJ for three, no good. Rebound. And the Blue Devils with it now, Lambrose. Into the Pataki minute now. Swings it inboard. Here's the left by O'Brien. Bakes it home. And we are, and it's uh, Churchill by one. Well, not anymore. It's uh, with Warns laying that up. And uh, it's now the Steelers by one. 34-33. Hopefully enjoying our coverage here on Falcons TV and Smash FM. Inbound and left. Here's Braun's drives in, swings it back out. Oh, great play here. Oh, missed everything. And uh, here they come now. Last play. Warnsborough inboard. Now they're Watman on a jumper. Misses. And uh, probably would have, should have maybe, uh, should have waited a little bit more and make the extra pass because Lambrose makes over two. Three seconds. Here's a chance here, and Warnsborough couldn't handle it. Out it goes. And at the end of the first half, a very entertaining first half, and the Western Port Steelers trail the Churchill Blue Devils 35-34 at the half. And uh, Andrew, we saw a very interesting first half. We certainly did. Uh, and again, all credit to, uh, to the Steelers. Coming back uh, hard after getting uh, down quite a way, I think they uh, were about eight or nine points down at one stage. Mm. Uh, so getting back into the game, becoming a lot more aggressive at the ball and and uh, making making Churchill actually have to work hard at each shot. 
again the thing that I'm, I'm you know they're, they're playing they're playing three out two in a lot of the time um, but uh, once the ball moves they're staying in those outside wing and, and uh, mm. point spots and defense doesn't have to move there they, they just don't have to move so if the ball doesn't go if the ball doesn't go into the post um, defense basic the uh, Churchill defense basically stays still so I'd like to see Mark uh, get them get them moving a bit more aggressively in their offense, find ways to, to move that zone around and, and force them to be accountable for their their area of turf. Of course, that's what you do in a zone. You, you're not trying to go with the player, but you're trying to defend a, a part of the court, a zone. Of course, the Steelers have gone uh, to their locker room, and of course... Uh the steel, uh, sorry, the Blue Devils decide to stay on the court. Um, of course, what would the Blue Devils be? Uh, the coach, uh, of course, Mika Mikadelis, will be saying to his players right now. Well, yeah. I don't know exactly uh, what he'd be he'd be looking for. He certainly he took one of the players, uh, one of the the bigs. Uh, I think it was Lexi Bo. I think um, Lexi, 15, yeah. yeah, took her over over to the the key there, and he was having a one on one with her for quite some time uh, and again suggesting that she needs to to get in there get down on split line get her hands up force force the shots over the top uh, as well but now um, uh, again you know look if they get the ball in transition Steelers haven't been able to do much about it so I think that that's what they're going to they're going to keep working at they'll stay in that zone uh, they'll try and force the Force the shot from outside. Steelers have not been particularly good from outside. They've been much better that last quarter going through uh, into the paint and scoring in the paint. Um, and uh, again, I don't know what the rebound count actually is at the moment, but my feeling would be that Churchill is actually shading that at the moment. Yeah, I'm just looking over now, and yeah, I can't tell you too much on how uh, the rebounding status is done because uh, I actually haven't got in their stats uh, screen here, so um, I can't actually tell you how they're actually going uh, so far. But uh, Steelers, I think they're too on too much on Rachel Warns to do the whole thing for them so far because Rachel <laughs> burst out the blocks again as per usual for her, and. Um, and everything's gone to Rach so far. Uh, yeah, well, she's been the one that's that's uh, decided she's going to to take the game by the scruff of the neck. But uh, but there has have been others there as well that have been working for her, particularly DJ, their captain. Um, so Diane Jolliffe, uh, she's been working extremely hard. I'd li also like one of the other things I'd like to see is is. Uh, quite a number of times, the uh, the Steelers have been getting the shot off very early in their in their set. Mm. Uh, probably probably use the use the time a little bit more. Just get a better shot up, makes it, and that the bigs are in there to rebound along the way. Absolutely, and um, I think uh, obviously, Warns has already had 19 so far in the game. 19 of the Steelers' 34 points. Yeah, it just shows, it shows you what a good player she is because because it's been, uh, whilst, whilst the majority of those shots have come from inside, uh, she has hit a couple of outside shots too and a, and, uh, a few uh, mid-range as well. So, uh, you know, the, the Churchill players have, have got, to, got to do a better job of shutting her down. However, having said that, if they can start to shut her, her production down, it opens it up for the other Steelers girls to, to really give it a lash as well. And they need to make their, their outside shots too. Yeah, I'd, I'd be, uh, again, I'd, I'd be liking to see them drive, 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 drive. Uh, and, and, of course, if they can't get through, just kick it out and then get the shot going. But uh, not this, uh, not just simply this kick it around, kick it around the... Around the key, with uh, very nice of the, uh, the Steelers, the Steelers to provide us with uh, a bit of uh, refreshment uh, along the way. That's good. 
I feel I feel like a cricket commentator, you know, sort of the uh, <laughs> uh, lunch. That's <laughs> lunch on day one. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes, and and uh, you know, debating the the merits of the 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 cakes. Yes, that have been brought in by the various various people. Great. Um, Which obviously um, talking about cricket, of course. Uh, sad news during the week with Phil, uh, Philip Hughes. Hughes died uh, during the week, which is uh, very sad news around uh, not just the cricket world but the the sporting world. Yeah, and and certainly social media has been absolutely full of it. In fact, it's pushed here in Victoria. It's pushed uh, uh, politics off the front pages for quite a quite a bit. Uh, News Corporation, in particular, has uh, produced quite a, a, I think, three or four wraparounds on their on their paper along the way, and they'll, they'll do it again when he's uh, for his memorial. Which, but um, it's uh, it's been quite a quite a big uh, big event. Of course, the the uh, no fault on anyone. It was just one of those absolutely okay, so. fluke occurrences that no one could have predicted mm. uh, and you know these guys are are used to dealing with with balls coming at them at a very fast rate of knots and mm. um, he just managed to to get struck in an unprotected area so absolutely and of course uh, of course that means the first uh, of course the memorial is actually on Wednesday the first test is on Thursday yeah if it goes ahead yeah they, they haven't announced yet the um, Australian cricket board has has not announced whether they will actually uh, play that game you would think um, the not, fit, yeah the well, the fe- on Wednesday the feedback though from all of his his uh, sporting mates is that it's one thing that Phil Hughes would not want us to see the the game postponed or, or cancelled. So they may, uh, you know, they may listen listen to his family and and see what they want. And uh, but it's a very sad sad occurrence. Um. Correct. And um, you know, like it, but it but obviously um it obviously affected Australian cricket, but also affected the cricket world. You obviously we saw the, um, the England uh, captain in. Alistair Cook uh, during the news during the week, and obviously uh, um, AB De Villiers, of course, uh, their team is actually down here in Australia at the moment, so uh, the South Africans, and of course the Indians will be down here. I'm sure they'll show their respect as well. Um, so, you know, it actually, it puts everything in perspective, doesn't it? Yeah, he, you know, the, 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 the very first, some of the very first uh, condolence uh, notices or messages came from the New Zealanders. Who, of course, are uh, in away Abu Dhabi. Yep. Yeah. So uh, they're Dubai, I think, aren't they? At the moment. Yeah, Dubai against Pakistan. That's yeah. right. Yeah. So it it wasn't just the the Australian cricketers and uh, that uh, that reacted to to the events. It was all around the world, and and of course uh, Phil Hughes had had played IPL with a lot of other uh, cricketers from around the world, and so they're all he, he was. Uh, from all reports, was uh, very much uh, respected and liked by by every uh, every cricketing nation. So, absolutely, and uh, of course, uh, be interesting to see how this one fo- unfolds. But as we're about to hit the second half here of this game, uh, Andrew, um, forty-one seconds to go. The uh, the what? teams are back on the courts. Uh, refs will be uh, trying to clear the courts shortly. What do you need? What do you think needs to happen for the Steelers to get themselves in front and at least build a sizable lead oh, to finish the game off? As I said, I think they have to. They have to work a lot harder in offence. They just need to. To uh, once the ball moves, they need to move. Um, defensively, I think they have to have to get in the uh, their faces of the uh, the Blue Devils. They can't afford to drop back into that zone. Blue Devils were shooting too well over the top of it. Uh, so, you know, really, it's they just have to, Steelers just have to do what they were doing, only do it better. Well, of course, Steelers will have the ball in the possession uh, arrow situation. And, uh, of course, uh, foul problems at the moment. Manit Life has three, and she's actually on the court at the moment, of course, to start this score. Of course, Manit Life needs to stay out of foul problems. They do need her and her shooting 
uh, down the stretch, of course, uh, in this game. Kalani Tolani Hood uh, had a lot of shots in that game, uh, so in that first half for the Blue Devils. She only has four points. So I'm sure she'll be get her shooting uh, back into gear very soon in this second half. Here's Watman on the right. Soon sort of to Monique Life on the, on the left. Back to Watman on the right. We got third on the shot clock. Inboard or try to go for Kieran, but a little bit too long that time and out it goes. Yeah. Oh, hang on. It's actually off to uh, off the Blue Devils. It is. Ten seconds on the shot clock. Uh-oh. Life wide open. On the inbound pass, no good. And uh, Watman almost picked up the rebound from behind. And here comes O'Brien. Swings it across to the Bowie course. In now. Here's O'Brien. Swings it in. Lost the handles. Turns it over. And then Kieran lost it here as well. And then uh, Bruins has lost it. Race uh, wants with the rebound. And here comes Watman. Life. To Warnsborough on Tiny Hood. Uh, tapped it off uh, Warnsborough's hands and out it goes. So very scrappy first uh, first 40 seconds so far. Four possessions, all turnovers. And a foul's been called. Is this on Monique Life? That'd be her fourth. I think it is. And she's coming off. So Life picks up four. A big blow for the Steelers. It's a very young uh, Steelers team, though. So, so here's Hood for three. She was stone cold in the first half, and she stays that way for a while. And O'Brien couldn't keep it in. Out it goes. You know she she played for a foul there, but uh, DJ hold her at bay. So 34-35, no score after a minute. Here in this game, Smash FM and Falcons TV coverage here of the CBL Round 8 Clash. Here's Warnsborough, lows the three, no good, and Galea gave it straight to Lambrose. So Lambrose brings it up, swings it in board to Bowie. Here swings it on the left, here's O'Brien. Back to Lambrose, got it by DJ. Talani Hood, guarded by Galea. O'Brien, we got nine on the shot clock. Now into Lambrose. To Hood, down the post, wins it back out to O'Brien. We've got four on the shot clock. Here's two on the way, misses that time. And the rebound by DJ, and off they go on a one on three. DJ steps back. Now to Watman. To DJ. Now to Galea. That to DJ on Watman on the left side. Lemon on the shot clock. DJ. Now to Watman on the left from uh, Jess Kieran. No good. Rebound now. It's oh, Galea put it back into play. Jess Kieran picks up. Pits it up and foul's been called. And after all that, uh, foul's been called against Churchill. Foul's on Talani Hood. That's her second. And at the line, it is Jess Curran. And a bit of floor wiping duty is about to happen on the court. 758 remaining, 35-34. So we've gone just over two minutes without a score. And 35-34 uh, in this game so far. And uh, here at the Steeler Dome here in Somerville. Makes the first. So we're all tied up at 35. And missed the second one from two. And the rebound by Hood. Good box out there from the uh, Churchill girls. So Hood. Back to O'Brien, right side. Swings it in now to Bo. Guarded by Warns. Great match on that one. Braun guarded by Kiernan. Oh, almost got the steal there by Galea. Hood for a jumper. No good. She stays stones cold. But she picks up an offensive rebound. Put back. No good. Rebound now. And uh, here they come. See what very unlike Tiny Hood to miss. Uh, oh, and the pass from uh, <laughs> DJ to uh, Warnsborough went a little astray. Didn't miss, didn't miss Warnsborough by much. Mm. But better, better when they're actually running in transition. Now, uh, now the Steelers extend their defense down the floor. They're running a, a one. Oh, and almost paid off. Warns with a bounce pass now to Hood. Now this is their. Now they need to get back here. Here is uh, two on the way there for Lambros and banks it home. So almost paid off, but not quite. Oh, and the pass from Another DJ turnover. to Watman, out it goes. 
they, are they, is Steelers a little bit, I guess, um, rushing it just a little bit? Yeah, not not a little bit. They're rushing it a lot. But, hey, you know, full full uh, credit to them that they're actually trying something. They're trying to push it down the floor quickly, trying to get into that tra- transition game. I liked I liked what I saw with the uh, the one two two press. Um, and they're still back in man under the under the key. So again, that's forcing that's forcing the turnovers. And uh, in that case, it was a, a jump ball. This time, going to the black uh, blue devils. Steelers, uh, sorry, blue devils oh. ball. Lambrose wide open, misses. Rebound by O'Brien with the putback. Got it. So that opens back up a four-point lead. Now, they can't rush this because this has been their problem. The last three possessions have all been turnovers. Here is Crennan back. So that's what, that's a lot better. So the margin is now two. Oh, Warnsbro picked it off. Here comes Galea. Bounce pass to Watman, right side. Back out now to DJ. Wide open. No, decide not to go inboard. DJ. Watman, wide open. Decides to go for a three. Misses. Rebound. Oh, G- Glee and the foul's been called. And the foul's been called against number 12. That's Bronze. Picks up foul number two. And uh, Andrew, that last two possessions, a lot better by the Steelers. Yeah, look, they're still, they're still working on, on those three, that, that three out, two in. Uh, across the top of the zone, and they're just, again, trying to skip the ball from one side to the other, which is fine. Uh, I just uh, I just don't like the, the way that, that it, it leaves the Blue Devils' defence in place there. So another steal here for the Steelers, and here they come now. Oh, look at this, That's one better. or two. And Galit, oh, missed everything, and DJ picks up the rebound. Not sure I actually hit the ring at all, actually. So I'm not sure why they went for a fresh 24. But uh, anyways, Wars were hit a two from outside. And the margin is now out to one point. That's the uh, score here. 40-39. And they're persisting with the full court press. And it's working so far. Look at yeah. that. That's another miss for the Church of Blue Devils. Yeah, the Devils not not running hard. Once the ball progresses, they're not running down to get down the court and create an advantage. Uh-oh. Wide open DJ for three. Misses that time. And she's hit those wide open shots from about uh, three foot beyond three point range. Yeah, she was too close that time. You know, yeah. one step back, she probably would have got it. And a turnover again for the Blue Devils. So I think this game's just done in the change. Turn around now to the Steelers now, build momentum. And I think what the Steelers need to do is do exactly what they've done the last couple of, couple of Churchill's possessions. Yeah, they have to press the ball down really hard though. You know, they've got to get that quick transition. So they're stuck at the half-court uh, offense at the moment here. Which has been their little downfall in the last couple of times. Turner drives up for two on the way. No good. And another rebound here. No one's uh, boxing out here. O'Brien gives it to Lambrose, who bakes it home. And I tell you what, Sam Lambrose uh, is starting to light it up here. Warnsborough for three. Got it. That's better. So Warnsbury's hit a three. We're back to two. Uh, back to a two-point game. Steelers in front. Uh oh. That will say take that. Says uh, Stacey O'Brien. Yeah, and that was that was a case of nobody nobody getting up on her at all. 44-43. So the Blue Devils by one. Here's a chance for Watman lies a three and paints another one. And Andrew, we've seen uh, a lot of players are wide open uh, at the moment. Yeah, both both teams so uh, leaving leaving the. Uh... And here's the two here for Braun's no good and uh, and Watman picks up the rebound. And Watman's probably picked up almost uh, at least six or seven rebounds already. Picked up at least five in the first half, uh, first quarter alone. Uh oh. Here is, uh, well, it's a curry picks up a three. And, uh, and I tell you what, uh, Andrew, this is looking very dangerous for the uh, Blue Devils. That is three possessions, 
three three-pointers for the Western Port Steelers. Yeah, it'll be dangerous if uh, if the Steelers can get a stop here. Here's Brawns, down the nine on the shot clock, almost a three-second violation. Here's the three of the way, foul's been called. It's after the shot, though, I think. Should be. And yep. yeah, it is. It's on Turner, her first. So that's probably the foul they didn't want, actually, because uh, they did pretty well to get it down and um, after a miss. So now, have, now it's a fresh 24. Hood for three. Missed everything. And Smith picks up the rebound. And can I say, Monique Smith is actually 15 years old. Played uh, two fantastic games this season so far. Uh-oh, here's another three. Oh, risen it out. Not by much. And... Uh, and Warnsbury picks up a foul. That's her first. Yeah, probably a good, good foul at that point in time. Uh, 2.46 on the shot clock. They've got, uh, they've got momentum. The last thing they wanted to do was to give, uh, give the uh, Blue Devils a, uh, an easy basket. So it's uh, Donnie here with it now. It's uh, O'Brien who's the player to stop at the moment. And a foot violation. Let's reset to a 14-second shot clock. I know we're going to reset to a 24. Normally, this is normally a 14. Should second. be a 14. Fresh 14. But anyway, they're going to remain on a fresh 23. 24-second shot clock. Here's a three on the way. This is, might hurt them. Missed everything, though. And here comes Warnsburg now. I would say if, if they can score here next to uh, the Steelers, it and might be it a is. time. Oh, oh misses them by Warnsburg. And out it goes. Who's the possession going to? But again, Steelers. again, much, much better movement there. Uh, ball went out wide. Wandsborough coming down, split line. Um, much, much better. And a timeout this time call. to... Steelers. Steelers this time. Interesting call by Mark. With your team in front by five, would you two call a timeout? Uh, he's got two minutes, two minutes and 18 to get, get through. So, uh, you know... Yeah, I'm not too sure. You're leading, you have momentum, and then you all of a sudden you make a, uh, you call a timeout. Yeah. But uh, how would I know? <laughs> of course. 49-44, uh, 218 remaining. Steelers in front by five. A desperation game for the Steelers. They need to win this game to stay alive in the top four. And, of course, we have Mafra having the bye this week. And, of course, Churchill just above them and Traralgon just above them. And, of course, Traralgon take on uh, Kurumbara. Because Kurumbara, if they win today against Traralgon, that might change a little bit of where, where the ladder positions go. And of course, uh, for Maui, the top of the ladder team, well, they've got, they've got the two bottom teams in this weekend. Great way to come off a week, week break. Take, a, take on the two bottom teams. One on the road, of course, that's tonight. Of course, Warrigal and Warrigal, and, of course, Bansdale at home. So uh, he's obviously obviously uh, sketched out a play here for this inbound. They're running a stack. And it's gone to Warnsborough. Yeah, and that's three. Oh. oh, close. Oh, and that probably should have been a holding foul there as well against the Devils. And, well. But it's a turnover. Steelers get the ball back. They're just done the rushing now, the Blue Devils. All of a sudden, they're sort of panicking a little bit here. Now, Blue Devils are very... Oh, wow. As soon as I said it, the Steelers make the turnover. Yeah, and it was interesting in that uh, that defensive set there that they're starting to double-team um, double uh, Wandsborough. So they're cheating. Their uh, split-line player is actually cheating across to Wandsborough when she's at the post. So, Tiny Hood... Jumper, still nice stone go. cold, and out it goes. And uh, Talani Hood, it's one from nine. I got uh, at least one from nine. At least she hasn't uh, quite hit. She's, she's got four points, but where she's hot, she's hot. In will go foul and count it. Yep. And it will be uh, a Don. Uh, sorry, Donny to the line. And the foul has been called. Yeah, Churchill running one down on the uh, on the inbound. I think that might be on Warns, but I think that's a second. No, no. So the Steelers, the Steelers, not recognising what uh, what their inbound play was, and they just uh, 
Left the gate open there for her to drive through. And she makes the three-point bonus. So it's a two-point game. Absolutely. Four fouls to two at the moment. 49-47. Sajai for two. Missed everything. Out it goes. And they had plenty of time on the shot clock too. So has the game turned here? O'Brien, who's pushed all the right buzz so far. Talani Hood is stone cold at the moment, but not anymore. Game's still tied up, 49 all. Talani with, uh, with six, which is two from ten at the moment. Sajaya, right side, two to the right. Oh, Trenton, back to Sajaya, long pass. They're trying to double team here, DJ. Inboard, here's Smith for two. Misses, not by Mars. Kieran always picked up the rebound, but went out of bounds. Hmm. So they decided to, to, to go uh, four out on that play. Don't know that that's, uh, that's going to work for them against the, 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 zone. the, uh, the zone. They One. looked a lot better when they were running three out, getting the two bigs inside. One minute to go. Inboard, two on the way. Misses there by Brawns. So Jai with the rebound. They pretty much almost got their junior team out there. Mine is uh, Watman and also uh, and uh, Jess Curran and Bridie Galea. Seven on the shot clock. 42 seconds left. So it's a two for one possession here for the Steelers. Long pass. Curran back to Sajai. Probably needs Watman at this stage. She does. Here's a three. One misses that time. And here comes uh, the Blue Devils. They might have a chance for one more play before the end. They do. And bakes that home. And the Blue Devils in front. And I think that was Donny who scored that one. And the margin now is two. So last play. Galea. Back out to Sajai. Three seconds on the buzzer. No good. Galea scripted. Here's Sharon on the buzzer. No and that remains that way for one more quarter. 49-51. What a close game we got here at the Steeler Dome. One quarter remaining for the Steelers to keep their hopes of a top four alive. While for the Churchill Blue Devils, a win today. And they've still got one game, of course. They've got a couple games up, up their sleeve. And uh, Andrew, they led by four at one stage, and the Blue Devils have just swallowed that up in one hit. Yeah, look, that, that, timeout, that timeout didn't work the way that Mark obviously wanted it to go. I think if they'd been able to score off that inbound play, it would have made all the difference, but they, they weren't able to do that. Uh, as the boys from Taralgon get themselves across the court and they're heading towards the uh, change rooms. Churchill. Churchill, sorry, yeah. Because, uh, well, because Churchill came off a last la loss last week, a surprise loss last week uh, to Warrigal. Because Warrigal is actually on top, so I guess it's not quite a surprise, but uh, it is a surprise in some ways. And, uh, of course, they take on the Steelers, who are in second position on the ladder, of course, trying to chase down the, the Warriors. And, uh, well, if I was uh, the Steelers right now, it's literally last roll of the dice for them. They've got three games left, and if everything don't go their way, they've got to fall out of the top, uh, the top four and make it very tough for them to come back. So, it'll be the Steelers ball again on the jump ball. And, uh, yeah, look, look, there was a lot of good stuff that, that from the Steelers. I liked, I liked their, their, uh, their decision to go to that uh, extended zone, press down the floor. Uh, I liked uh, them working through the posts, trying to go inside rather than just shooting from outside. And at the end of the time, they, they went back into, into that same pattern of, of kicking the ball around, trying to get the three-point shot up. Great if it goes, but uh, hey, you know, very dangerous against, uh, against a, a, 
a team that's as defending as solidly as uh, the Blue Devils is. Yeah, the defending champions, uh, the defending champions for a reason. Here's Monique Light for three. She's playing with fouls, and guess what? Came back on the court and swishes a three. Now, if you notice the difference, the difference there with that ball movement was that it was quick. Uh, and they did, they did actually create uh, gaps in the zone because of that quick ball movement. And Talani Hood uh, shot miss, and then uh, and then blocked from behind by DJ. So shot clock at 22. Ball back into play. Double team here, long pass back out. Here's Chess here, here's Talani Hood on the left. She drives it in, it fakes no good. She picks up another rebound, throws it into the Brawlers, bakes it home. And Talani Hood, you know her shots are not falling, but uh, she makes, some, uh, makes something happen for her team. 53-52. Yeah. And again, junior coaches would be telling their players, you can't defend from behind. You have to get in front, get body on the player. Even if they're bigger than you, you've got to box them out or block them out. And that's not what happened then. No, and uh, all of a sudden, because uh, Jessica uh, missed the three completely, and uh, here comes Talani Hood, right side. Another shot here, another out. Two or three, and that's going to be quite dangerous for the for the Steelers. Seven on the shot clock. Almost there it is, that's better. Got the steal. Here's Benite Life. Two on three. DJ wide open. Took to well. That's a lot better that time. And uh, this time they bait that home. The margin is one. 54-53. O'Brien round. DJ foul. Foul before the basket. That's probably a reasonably good foul, actually. And uh, DJ picks up foul number one. Ball back into play. Bronze catch and shoot. Got it. Yeah, the Steelers are not being able to handle the inbound sets of, uh, of Churchill at all. 55-54. Here's Great Kern. pass that time. Fade right away. Oh, misses not by much. And here comes the Blue Devils now. They can make them pay down the other end. Kalani Hood, sweeps around the back to O'Brien. Sweeps it up to the left. Here's the two of the way. Misses, rebound by Benite Life. So she's playing with, five, uh, with four fouls at the moment. Left side, Watman. Been quite so far. That's better, drive and dish. And Watman shot misses. Didn't go, yeah, shot didn't go in, but, but much, better, uh, much better attack there from the Steelers. O'Brien, left side, bounce passes now for Donnie, no good. Another rebound for O'Brien, bakes it home. And O'Brien's been a little terrier down there in, uh, in, the, in the low post. Even though she's actually a guard. Yeah, and Wandsborough needing some support there in defence, didn't get it. DJ, you can hear Mike Pryor just in the background saying so need a bit of structure. DJ missed completely. And here comes uh, the Blue Devils. Drives it in, foul, we'll this go time, on. Yeah. Oh, the foul's on number nine. It's on Wars, bro. Time out to the Blue Devils. Oh, surprises. Jeez, we've had, uh, we've had plenty of these ones today. Yeah. So let's see the Blue Devils playing on the timeout works because we're at, well, Westerport took a timeout Led by five and the it backfired, and now um, Blue Dale was taking time out with three point lead. Let's hope that doesn't get backfired on them. What do you think Mike probably be saying right now to his players? Uh, again, he's he's going to be talking about uh, you know defensive uh, play, getting off getting off uh, your player and playing help defense. Um, and uh, you know really really work hard at that. And, uh, and then, of course, for the opposition in uh, Nick uh, Mykonelis, uh, for Churchill, what do you think he'll be saying to his players? Because uh, he took the time out. You know, again, if the feel there, I think, is just simply, uh, for him, is, is, again, more of the same. They've just got to keep pressing. They've got, to, they've got the... Uh, You know, they're, they're, they've been able just to find the, the right shot, the right player at the right time. 
So with those guys, it, you know, it surprised me what he's asked. He, he's actually run that uh, time out there. So Tiny Hood. Isn't inbound. So again, looks like they'll run one down. Yep, that's exactly what they're doing. So Tiny Hood now. Gives it to Bronze. Left side, swings it up for two. Oh, missed everything. Now that was that was that was better better read there from the Steelers on that deep on that uh, inbound play. Manit life, three point game. They need to stay within reach. Monswa can't. Oh no, wasn't awesome Monswa? Just cured and missed it. Yeah, couldn't hold the, the pass. Good intention though. So, well, the steel. Uh, so the Blue Devils who made them pay for this. If they can get it in, of course. Yeah, it's only, look, it's only a three-point game at the moment, so... Uh, Both teams have terrible last quarters, so, this season. Uh, here's Hood for two, bakes it home. It's out to five. So T Talani uh, has started to put her shooting um, so shots uh, back into play here. DJ drives it in, bakes it home. That's better. She she also had uh, somewhat in deep corner there for the uh, for the drive and dish as well. That didn't need it. O'Brien with it now. Going to be very close for uh, CB and the MVP in today's game because there's been so many so far. Braun's missed it. Talani Hood with the offensive rebound put back. Yeah. Again, again the uh, Steelers player found behind behind the the offensive player. Talani has at the moment 10. She only had four for the whole first half. As Watman banks a three. Well, that's two what points. Two points. Now stop. She only needs to stop now. Watman with six. And again, leaving leaving the uh, the Blue Devils player open. Oh, just lucky though. As uh, that pass from O'Brien to Talani, who had went a little astray, out it goes. Tell you what, Dandrew, uh, the Steelers off the hook that time. Yeah. Yeah, and obviously a decision there to uh, to overplay uh, Hood. Uh-oh, Watman does it again. This time on the right. And I uh, tell you what, Bree Watman, is, she's, she's got nine today, all of them from three-point range. And the Steelers hit the lead at 62-61. They need to stay in this game because both teams are terrible last quarter teams. They are ranked, uh, well, they actually ranked to seven and eight in final quarters teams at the moment. So, uh, of course, the Steelers do a little better than the Blue Devils at the moment. Oh, here's a three for one. Rah! And uh, also on the bank, the last three three-pointers for the Steelers, and they're back women four, and they've hit the lead. Yeah, and there's no timeouts left for the uh, Blue Devils coach either, the Churchill coach. He's, he's used his last timeout, so he's now got a hope that, uh, that Mark Perotta decides that he wants to timeout. There's a travel. No basket. Andrew, what has changed for the Steelers? Because they were looking all gone, and they couldn't, couldn't get their defense going. Yeah, well, it's it's you know just bank a couple of shots, and and it's amazing how that changes your your uh, men mental attitude to the game. So, so Watman swings to the Warns for a drives in, swings it back That's out better. in the neat life. Bad pass though. Back to War uh, Warns before two misses. Well, another rebound now this time to Watman, an offensive rebound, fresh twenty-four. But if you've noticed, they're, they're starting to drive the key and then... Live the fakes up. a three! Sorry about that, Andrew. No, the last, the, the last couple of times they, they've attacked, the, attacked the, uh, the zone, they've scored. Out it goes. And Andrew... I seem to remember saying that that's what I wanted to see them do right from the, the beginning of the game. They've scored 12 zip and they've scored all from three-point range. Inboard to Talani Hood. Blue Devils need to get themselves out of this little pickle now. Braun's missed another rebound by Hood with a putback. Backs it home. Somehow they can't break Talani Hood though. Five point game. Three minutes remaining. Final quarter. Steelers season is on the line. With four games remaining for them. 
They need to keep shooting. Here is a three for Glee miss, uh, sorry, Kieran missed it. Glee unlucky not to get a foul. Fresh 24. That was that was uh, good, uh, good experience there. So Watman, life, lies another three. Kieran this time misses a two. And here they come. Oh, they almost lost it that time. And uh, i tell you what, the Blue Jet was lucky to get out of that. Lambrose stripped it in. The foul's on. Uh, oh, it's no, it's a travel. It's a travel. It's a travel. And I, Talani who wants a timeout. She's, she's saying to her coaches, need a timeout. Yeah, and I was wrong, sorry. They, they do have one timeout remaining. I thought they had used their last one up, but they do have one. Two so, minutes, 24 seconds to go. Lucky, don't want a timeout. Interesting call. Here is Great Galea. Move. Great move. Face it in. And that's Great her move. first two-pointer. Timeout's been called. And what a great timeout. Talani Hood said, we wanted the timeout, and she got it. And uh, Andrew, what is going on? The Steelers, uh, like a steam train, 14 to two run by the Steelers have got themselves in front by seven with 2.15 remaining. Yeah, again, again, you know, they're attacking that zone. They're, they're making the zone get out of shape. Then they're kicking the ball out to somebody who is in a good position to, to take the shot. Or, as you saw there, they're working inside. So this is this is really what I would have liked to have seen them do a lot more early in the game. I'm still not totally convinced about their uh, the, their movement off the ball. Yep. But uh, but certainly it's moving the ball better. They're not just simply uh, kicking a long overhead pass, skip pass across the court. They're, uh, the passes are, are flatter, they're faster. Uh, looks like there's some purpose in what they're doing and, and the, the Churchill girls are having to, to react to that and they're finding themselves a little bit flat-footed. And also, look, I don't think with Warns Brazil managed two points out of 16 uh, points for the Steelers, and all of a sudden they've just gone bang. And Warns other yeah. people, other players are, are stepping up. Yeah, and I think that was the, what you pointed out at half time that, that she'd scored 19 out of their 32, 33 points, something like that. Yep. Um, and now it's now you're finding that the other players are, are starting to contribute more, so. Here's Braun for two, no good. Rebound now. Oh, it's close. It's a rebound again. Trying to double team and then the foul's been called. And of course, part of that is that the uh, the, the Devils are, have actually been double teaming Wandsworth as well. Ryder picks up three. So she's in the, into that foul territory. Here's three for Hood, no good. And if, if the Steelers can get another shot here, it puts the Blue Devils in a bit of strife. Yeah. Blue Devils trying to press down the floor a bit more. Of course, last they've time they... This is the first time they've played in, in a man for the entire game. Let's see if it's going to work. Here's Monique Life for three. Oh, rings in and out, not by much. That would have put the hearts uh, down there for the Blue Devils. Hood, left side. Here is uh, Bronze for three, no good. Rebound by Bree Watman, who's a guard. Oh, look at this. Monique Life down the floor and bakes it home. And Andrew, if the Steelers can just hold on now for a minute 12, they're going to win this game. Yeah, Steelers. Steelers. Foul's been called. And it looks like it might be an offensive foul. It is on, uh, on Talani Hood. Yeah. And uh, I tell you what, uh, I don't know what, whatever was said for Mark Pride in that timeout. It's worked. Yeah, well, as a coach, you know, when the, when the team gets on to a bit of a run and they're doing things, things right and they're feeling good about themselves, it makes whatever you say uh, absolutely pearl of wisdom. But there it is. Look at that. that. Again, better movement through the zone. Missed not by much. Oh, foul's been her in Monique Life. She's fouled out. Bit unlucky, though. <laughs> Let's face it. Manit Lights fouled out. So that's the 14 foul now on the on the Steelers. They just can't afford a foul again now. And can't afford a three like Talani Hood. Oh, airballed at that one. Out it goes. 
And uh, tell you what, I said these two teams are pretty bad at final quarter teams. Well, uh, for the Blue Devils, they're actually bottom in fourth quarters. And, and there's a foul. That's the second. Fouls on O'Brien. 29 seconds to go. It looks done. Surely Steelers won't let this game go. No, I think I'll call it. They've played the best last quarter they've played all year. The Steelers. Steelers got two timeouts left. Churchill has one. Sins in it. Oh, what was that? Is and that a foul? A push. And it looks like it'll be a foul. What's the call here? Nine yep. fouls been called on Talani Hood. That's her fourth. And third team. So Talani now in a bit of foul problem too. But it'll be all too late anyway. Oh, great steal there. And O'Brien should make it to the basket. Oh, and a foul by uh, Forsbra with 8.4. Now that puts them in the bonus. Not that it's going to uh, matter anyway. Matter. Well, the Steelers have broke a three-game losing streak. And they've done it in dramatic fashion. To put themselves in great position. And uh, so Brian banks at home. They move themselves back into third position on the ladder. And uh, that will conclude things here. The Steelers will win and break a three-game losing streak. DJ, put, oh, I was going to say put the ice on the tape, but couldn't happen that time. But that's it. The Steelers, on the back of a 23 to 14 run in the last quarter, have won the game 72 to 65. We're going to take a break here on Falcons TV and Smash FM. We'll be back with some interviews after.